What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of BS for Build. In this episode, I need to wrap up the car as fast as I can this morning and get it on the road so we can get started on our road trip. To do that, we need to do some interior stuff. We need a steering wheel, we need seats, we need seat belts, and then on the body side, we need to finish attaching a lot of the body. Stay tuned. Before we can hit the road, before we should hit the road, we definitely can hit the road right now, but before we should hit the road, there's some things that we should do. So um, I'm gonna jump on mounting the fenders the proper way. Right now they are drilled and have a couple rib nuts, but they need all the rib nuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all the rib nuts, make them black and nice and look good, and then that will kind of finalize the body. The over fenders are legitimately installed. They have the right hardware on them. They look so pretty. They're a nice placement. Oh, I did want to mention, we were planning on doing molding, the black molding that I've talked about on other wide body things that you do between the kit pieces. But after talking about it with Chelsea, we both thought that the black lines in the body would really upset the look of things, start to look a little Tron-like. So we bailed on it. We just said, screw it. We'll put the kit right on the panel. And uh, I've done that on all my other cars and never really had any issues. Sometimes you get a little bit of like uh, debris stuck in the crack sometimes. So it takes a little bit more work cleaning, but hell, I don't clean my cars anyway. So not a problem. All right. Um, we haven't done the uh, speed nuts on the side panels to, from the fender to the bumper yet. I will do that before we leave. But my fingers are sore from working on all those Allen bolts. So I'm going to move on to the interior. We have a new steering wheel provided to us by D&D Performance. I'll put a link in the description. They hooked us up with this awesome steering wheel and hub assembly that I'm going to go ahead and install right now. Hell yes, that wheel looks and feels so good. It matches the car so well with the red on the red on the red. It's awesome. Now they also hooked me up over at D&D. Let me just put it the darkest thing in the darkest place with the quick release. And this quick release, if I add it on there, I feel like it might move the wheel too close to me in the driver's seat and we don't have a lot of room for adjustment as far as just this is a very cramped cabin in general in these cars. So I'm gonna test it out without the quick release first because I have a feeling it probably won't fit. And then, um, and then if I have room, I'll add it in. If not, I'll probably leave it out and we could use it on another build. I'm actually the next build I know I can use it on. So um, huge thanks to D&D Performance for hooking us up with the seats that you're gonna see me install in a couple minutes. And obviously the wheel and the hub, it looks fantastic. And I'll put a link in the description. They have plenty of other wheels and different color patterns and different styles to match your ride. If you're interested in getting one, I highly, highly suggest it. All right, next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is uh, the seat for the driver's side is good to go, but the passenger side wasn't. Now that we installed carpeting, I can't see exactly where all the holes are to build the bracketry. So if we come over here, these are our seats. They are mounting each other. Um, and this is my modified bracket. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the seat bracket for the other one that's unmodified and build it to match this. That way I should be able to just go ahead and bolt it into the passenger side. Just finished modifying this uh, passenger side seat bracket. So what I did was I cut the tabs off, did a nice little tack weld and then test fit it inside the car. It fit right up. So then I came back and did a full weld and a coat of paint. So the next thing I gotta do is get the seat belt connections done. So right here bolts on a little thing that plugs into the seat belt. We obviously gotta have seat belts. So I gotta find those for both of these, get them bolted in. Then we're gonna take our hardware and mount these to the seat rails and then we can throw our seats in the car. Oh, 
Okay, we got our little seatbelt clipper thingies. So now we can clip our seatbelts in and we have the brackets firmly attached to the bottom of the seats. And these brackets are obviously the ones that bolt into the car. So let's get the seats in the car and bolt them in there. Before I throw the seats in the car, a quick status update on our trip. I've decided that we're not gonna leave today. I'm stretching it out one more day. Reason being, um, it's about 5.30 right now, and I was trying to wrap up in time to head down to the DMV, uh, but we're not gonna be able to do that. And, uh, and it's getting dark, and I'm not a huge fan of taking brand new cars that I haven't really driven much in the dark and heading out on the roads, because if you get stuck on the side of the road, it's harder for people to see you, and et cetera, et cetera. It's harder to drive a new car, I'm driving on the wrong side of the road, all that stuff. So I failed. The plan was to be on the road on spring break, so instead of having this car done in like 21 days, it'll be a 22 day uh, build. Um, I was clearly pushing it really hard, burning the candle at both ends, waking up really early and staying up really late. Um, but I think this is just the best idea is to push our whole schedule back a day. So we're not gonna, uh, we're not gonna leave today. So uh, we're actually gonna leave tomorrow. I've decided we'll leave early tomorrow morning. It'll be a much, much better drive too. So. That's that, I just feel a lot more relaxed and a lot better today and we'll be able to do a much more thorough shakedown on this thing before we really hit it on the highways. So uh, continuing though, exactly as planned, seats in the car. That is a really good looking interior. Everything matches nicely. It's very pretty. It's, so we got the, you know, the black steering wheel with Alcantara uh, steering wheel with the red stitching. And then we got the black seats with the red stitching and the red quick release. It all just really, really matches nicely. Even the, uh, the dials on the gauges, um, they really match everything. So it looks really great. I'm super, super stoked with the way it came together. The seats are nicely bolted in here. Sitting in them, they're very comfortable and, uh, and they really hold you in place. It's really cool that they even fit in the car because it was real close. If these were like an inch different in any direction, they definitely wouldn't fit. This car overall does not have a lot of space. You can see that's like the backpack holder area right there. It's teeny tiny. Obviously nobody's ever gonna really sit back there. And then the trunk is tiny too. So Chuz is gonna have a tough time putting her luggage in here for the road trip. Super stoked on that stereo. We still need a bezel for it, but it is, oh, I said super stoked, damn it. It is uh, gonna be uh, huge for the road trip. I just realized too though, this car doesn't have cruise control, so I have to drive a thousand miles without cruise control. But it'll be in a sexy interior and I'll be on the wrong side of the road, so that'll be entertaining. Next up, a lot of these bolts are red from the paint job. They were here when we painted. They need to be black. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off all the red ones, replace all the black ones. So the rear uh, over fenders all need to be black. We're getting close. There's not much more to do now. Now that I got these finalized, we need the side skirts go on outside once we get the car off the lift. So the next thing on the list is some pretty small stuff. We gotta clean up the side mirror, add some tire shine, and we are gonna go ahead and replace the windshield wiper blades. I always have trouble with windshield wiper blades. I don't know why, but hopefully I can figure these ones out and get them on and off pretty quick. That's the funniest thing ever to me that I have so much trouble with those. We got the tires all cleaned up, shined up, darkened. They're darkened. That's how I want them to look. I don't like super shiny looking tires. I want the wheels to be shiny. The tires can be not, not even noticeable. We got our windshield wiper blades on there. I got those ones. I nailed those ones. Those were easy. Uh, and then the mirrors. The mirrors uh, needed a little bit of an actual polish, so I got out the polisher and polished up the mirrors, and uh, they look a lot better. So that's all good. Next thing that we gotta do, last thing that we gotta do, speed nuts on the front bumper and fender connection. That line right there, we're gonna go ahead and drill a hole through both of those put a speed nut on the back and put a bolt through them so they're attached at that spot. It's gonna be a total pain in the ass because I really don't wanna take this wheel off so we're gonna crank this wheel all the way onto the inside and then work on that.
This side was so far off that I actually had to use a pretty large nut and bolt combo with some big washers to get it on there and then cinch it down. But we were able to and it's really, really firmly on there. And then over here, we used a speed nut setup and they're both, they both look good. And you know, this side for instance looked good period and I didn't really need to do anything, but I like to do something so I know I have that connection there. That way when I slam the front bumper into something, like say I come out of a driveway, a real steep driveway or anything like that, I know exactly where to go look and make sure, okay, is everything still connected where it should be to give me a little feeling of security like this thing is still attached to the car. So with that being done, that's it. We're ready to go. I mean, the side skirt goes on once we get it outside, but other than that, we are done. There's nothing on my to-do list. My tool bag is packed. Everything's ready to roll. The one thing that we skipped on this that you guys probably noticed that we're missing is the rear diffuser. It's over there in a bunch of pieces. We didn't put it on simply because I completely ran out of time yesterday, and then I ran out of my time for today as well. So that's it. Let's get the car down. I'm really excited to take it for a drive. <laughs> My whole plan to just drive away into glory was pretty cool, but it did not work. So by the time we got out here, two things happened. One, I realized that the dash has no lights on it. And the other thing is when we look under the hood here, um, well, back inside the dash, the coolant low uh, siren went off like crazy. And then I popped this open and we have like no coolant in there. So we need to put the funnel on there, run the system, let it heat cycle multiple times and bleed off any other air bubbles that are in there. And then while I'm doing that, I'm gonna check for any fuses that are under underneath the dash that may be blown that um, light up our dash, uh, yeah, our dash. And then if that's the case, which I don't think it is, um, we may get some of our Rocket Bunny light features back. What I think is more likely the case is when we are doing the final installation of the gauge cluster, we unplug the plug. But either way, let's go ahead and start bleeding the system. Success! I pulled out the stereo. I had a suspicion that it was the dimmer switch was left unplugged or broken or something. So I pulled out the stereo, since we don't have that bezel on it, kind of just slides right out. Found out that it was unplugged, managed to plug it back in, and then we got our illumination. It looks, it's a really cool green color actually too. And then over there, we're, uh, we're filling up the radiator and we're almost halfway to, uh, to warm there. And it really hasn't gone down at all lately. So I think we're about ready to go take it for a drive back from my drive and I really get why everybody likes these cars so much. They spool super fast with uh, the small twins on there and they're so lightweight, they're so fun to drive. This thing's really, really fun to drive. We had a little bit of scraping going on in the back, but upon some inspection, it's not really eating away too much, so I'm gonna let it go because it's only under like really, really hardcore bumps. So, last thing to do, I'm gonna throw the side skirts on and I'm going home. Sorry it's so dark, but the side skirts are on. And they're really on there because I spun out one of the riv nuts, so it really can't come back off anytime quick. So if we get in an emergency and we got to go up, then that wheel is going to try and hit that and we're going to have to chop that thing down at the bottom there and just go straight down. We can't have that tuck back in. I will say though, this is a good lesson that um, instead of using crimp down uh, steel riv nuts like what I was using, use rubber well nuts like what we used on the WRX. Those are a lot better. Just take the time, order them in, it'll be worth it. All right, let's drive this beast home. About a quarter mile in and I've broken down. <laughs> Luckily I found a nice school to park at. Uh, I think I'm hearing a really loud clanking in the back and it sounds like it's the wheel and I can see some of those lug nuts look like the threads are really far out. So I'm guessing in all the commotion and everything that Dennis forgot to tighten down that rear wheel. So uh, I'm gonna bust out the tools. That's why I always drive around with a tool set these days. I'll bust out the tools and try and tighten that thing down. Yep, both rear wheels were really loose. That's the closest we've ever been to losing a wheel. Dennis. This one's on you. All right, let's go home. All right, back home. My first reaction to driving the car is that suspension is something different. We're getting a little bit of scraping on the rear, but it's not taking away any of the tire in any significant way at all, so I'm not too worried about that. 
Um, it needs to be raised up a little bit in the rear and it is stiff as rocks. It's great. It's the stiffest suspension I've ever driven on. So I don't know if that part is adjust. I don't think it is. I think that's just how those are. So what I would like to do is raise that up a little bit. Maybe that's something we can do when we get to TJ's place. But for the highway driving that we're going to be doing tomorrow, it's just straight I-5 straight shot. Probably won't probably won't matter at all uh the handling of the car though co cornering and stuff is really really cool and i already talked about how the turbos come on super super quick and super early and so it feels it's just it's a really cool car with how lightweight it is so um but it definitely worries me i think it's uh it, it just it worries me so i have no idea if it's gonna make it on on the trip i'll tell you ahead of time we're gonna try and drive this thing all the way down to disneyland if anything goes wrong and we have to stop that car is just going to get left wherever something goes wrong and we are moving on we're going on vacation i hate to do that i don't want to do that in the show but I promised chelsea this vacation months and months and months ago so i'm not screwing that up the the car will just have to get shipped home or whatever or towed home or whatever and then we'll proceed when i'm back from vacation so that's the game plan but anyways i think it'll make it next episode can the rx7 drive a thousand miles down to disneyland and i'll see you then uh, please remember to support our sponsor, JDM Buyer. It is your number one source for JDM parts if you're interested in uh, getting some parts from Japan. Or if you want to get a whole car from Japan, uh, check out their other uh, website, other company, uh, RB Motoring. It's like a partnership uh, company. And they just brought in a couple Skylines. So they got, they got some stuff. Um, hit them up over there if you want to bring in a whole vehicle. I mean, this is such a steal. $3,000 for a 50,000 mile RX-7. It's the stuff you can find in Japan. That's We just bought it straight from Japan. Uh, all right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.